Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to solve some more logic puzzles, but I'm not alone. I have Nelson Dellis with me. This is Nelson. Nelson, say hi. What's up, guys? Nelson is the five-time and current USA Memory Champion. He has the best memory in all of America. Believe that. He also has a YouTube channel. I recommend you go over there because you can learn how to improve your memory. And also you get to see that beautiful face every time he posts, which <laughs> not so win. Nelson was in the comments of one of our previous videos and he said, I have some, uh, you know, logic puzzles for you. And hey, any excuse to talk to Nelson is good for me. So uh, don't make them too hard, Nelson. But what do you got? How many you got for me? I got four for you. Got is four? Good? All right. So, okay, this will do. Since he's got four, after the first question, I'll cut to me trying to solve it and then we'll go back and forth. Hit nice. me with the first one. All right, the first one, a little raunchy, but uh, the, okay. the puzzle itself behind it all is, is, is pretty clever. So um, you got three men and a woman. I guess they're stranded somewhere and they're all willing to get down. Uh, but they all have STDs that would kill each other if they any surfaces touched each other. All right. So um, there's only two condoms. So how can... Everybody have all three men have sex with a woman using the two condoms, but nobody gets infected. Okay, <laughs> I like you're just just starting right with the dirty one. I like this. Okay, yeah. I'm in. I'm down. Probably going to end up texting you um, with my guesses or if I need any clarifications. But uh, yeah, that should be okay. Yeah, man. No problem. Good luck. How can three people, three guys, have sex with one woman using two condoms without any of the services? Touching. That's such a weird one. So, uh, just by the way he phrased this, obviously you can turn the condoms inside out. I'm getting that for sure. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> this, I just had, ah, oh, I just had a great epiphany. I already, I've already solved this one. I already solved it. Okay. Um, first two guys have sex. They use both. One guy uses one condom, no problem. Next guy uses the other condom, no problem, so they're both perfectly safe. Uh, and then for the third guy, one of the dudes takes the condom off, turns it inside out, and the third guy puts it on, and then the other dude takes his condom off and turns it inside out as well. No, just takes it off, does not turn it inside out, and puts it over the other condom. Holy crap. <laughs> Nelson says that's wrong, and I see why, because she's touched the condom, so he flipped it inside out. You're still dead. So we have to start with two condoms on the first guy. First guy uses two condoms. This is such a stupid riddle. He uses two condoms. Second guy just takes the outer condom and uses it. Third guy gets the original inner condom inside out and puts it on so he's totally clean and takes the original outer condom that the second guy used and puts it back over outer. So all of her contact stays with her and all of their own contact stays with them. <laughs> oh, these diagrams are going to be fun. Hopefully you enjoy that. <laughs> Whew. Logic puzzles can be dirty too. I thought it was just jokes. Guess not. This is good times. <laughs> Number two, uh, it's, okay, you have a cake, let's say a round birthday cake, and you want to cut it into eight equal slices, okay? But you only have three cuts allowed. How do you do it? Okay, I like this one because like, it's gonna be easy for me to make a, uh, some visuals for this one as I'm trying to figure it out, so that'll be good. Unlike the last one where the visuals, I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how those Might visuals are gonna be. able to show those, no. <laughs> uh, that's great, okay, that's a good one. I like that kind a lot. Um, yeah, okay, I shouldn't start thinking about it yet. Okay, okay, so the birthday cake. We have a birthday cake that we have to cut into eight even slices and we only have three cuts to do it. If we do it normal, it just goes one, two, three. That only gives you six. <laughs> okay, now this is not this. You would not. I don't think this is this is not practical. You would not do this because. Okay, this is this is my pitch. I'm gonna check with Nelson. Birthday cake. It's the world's most boring birthday cake. Okay, it is completely um, homogeneous. It is the same all over. There is no better piece, okay? Uh, there's no icing or anything. So you cut it in half all the way, one. You cut it in half the other way, two. That's two cuts and we have four beautiful pieces, okay? Uh, now take your knife and go down on the side and cut it right in the middle, bisecting the whole cake. 
And now you have two layers basically of four pieces. Boom, 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 boom. Eight awesome pieces. That's gotta be it and I like it. When you think of a birthday cake, you think it has to be cut just the one way because everyone wants that sweet piece, you know, with the, the stuff on the side and the top, you know, and the icing on the top. Of course, that's how you want to cut a birthday cake. But in logic puzzle land, that is not how they play. They don't always play fair, but they play logical and that is beautiful. I like that a lot. That's gotta be the answer. I'm gonna check with Nelson right now. Nelson said that's wrong. <laughs> so I love, I, I, I'm really liking these ones. Uh, I really thought I had it there. Um, he said that it is a normal birthday cake in the sense that there is icing on the top and, and everyone wants some of that top icing and you can still get identical pieces. Uh, there's something about those two layers that was so beautiful to me. <laughs> This is out there. Cut it in half. Stack one half on top of the other half. One cut, stack one half on top of the other half. Cut that in half, two cuts. We have four pieces. Take those two pieces, stack those on top. So now you have four of the same pieces stacked up and then cut down through all four of those pieces. That's three. Eight pieces, that's gotta be it. Let me check with Nelson. Boom, that's it. Woo -hoo! Nice. Oh, I thought I was so clever before. That's even more clever. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yes. All right, number three has to do with a tennis tournament. All right, so imagine that there are 127 players, you know, playing in this tournament. All right, so 126 get paired off into 63 matches. Right. One person gets a bye. Um, you know, you and know, then the next round, round, there's 64 players in 32 matches and so on and so right. on until you get to the final, which has two players to one winner, right? Okay. The question is, how many matches total would there be to determine the winner? Now, <laughs> you could figure that out, obviously, if you do all the math, but there's a quick, elegant way to do it. And that's the answer I'm looking for here. Okay, so it's, it's how many matches, not how many brackets, like not how many rounds, like actual. Physical. Exactly, how many games are played? Okay, total. and there's like a tournament. there's a quick way just to fucking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this is sick. One hundred twenty-seven players. They got to get down to the final player. Okay, and there's an easy way to find out how many matches that's going to take. I mean, you can walk through it, like Nelson was saying. So you go, they got to play sixty-three games with a bye. And they get down to 64 players, and they're gonna play 32 games. Uh, they get down to 16, they have 16 games, get down to eight, eight games, get down to four, four games, get down to two, two games, get down to one. So we're playing 63 games, plus 32 games, plus 16, plus eight, plus four. So, oh, it just doubles, that's crazy. So, of course it would. <laughs> Duh, playing with two people. Seven, 15, 31, 63. 226. Could it be that easy? Could it be you play one less amount of games as the number is? I mean, that's not, I don't know if this is how you're supposed to get there. We, we kind of cheated. We went to the answer the old way and logic it back. But I, I mean, I can't, un, I can't unknow that now. So I don't know if that's how you're supposed to solve it. Let's check it against uh, 129 players. Uh, 96 plus 16 is 112. 6, 127, 128. So. I think it's just one less whatever the number is. That's cool. What? How does that even, I guess that makes sense. What? No. What? F of course it is. Everybody has to lose except one person. Whoa. That's so stupid and logical. Why would I take so long to figure that out? It's always one less than whatever the number is. What a weird, awesome fact. Of course it is. Everybody has to lose. You have to play enough times that everyone loses, which is as many times as there are people minus the winner. What? <laughs> That's great. Last one, number four. What do we got? All right, so I have to read this one because it's a little detail I have to say it precisely. So this one, uh, there's a convention of 100 scientists, all right? Each one was either a physicist or a chemist. Okay. All right. One physicist noted that given any two of the members, at least one of them was a chemist. All right. 
from that observation, can it be determined how many of them were chemists and how many were physicists? And if so, how many were there of each? <laughs> I'm gonna have to write this one out. All right, <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> okay, there's 100 scientists and they're either a chemist or a physicist. And one of the members noticed that given any two members, at least one of them was a chemist. That doesn't seem possible. If there's 10 chemists, or if there's two chemists, then that could be the two, they could be together. At least one, okay, okay, at least one of them. So you could have two chemists. You could have two chemists, at least one of them. At least one of them is a chemist. So you could have two chemists, but you can't have two physicists. So then it must be just one physicist. Yeah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> the lone physicist among the scientists and the rest are chemists. Ooh. I think you must have went to the wrong convention. I hope you guys enjoyed that today. The condom one was actually the hardest one. It sounded like the most ridiculous, but that one definitely took, uh, took the most thinking about trying to flip. And um, I dread to see what kind of graphics I'm gonna come up with. So hopefully you enjoyed those too. The birthday cake, I mean, not practical, but feel free to try it. The scientist one and the tennis one both took more thinking than they should have. They're super, super logical. I mean, I guess that's why they're logic puzzles. Beautiful though. Beautiful when you know. Beautiful when you get there, like these always are. All right, so how often are you post on YouTube? On average, it comes out to like two videos a month. Perfect. Um, I'm super nitpicky about how my videos turn out, so they could come out sooner, but I'm always like, no, that doesn't look quite right, and I spend hours and hours making it better. That's great. And they're all, are they always memory stuff or do they vary? Kind of, I don't know. I vary between like mind related stuff. It's, it's mostly themed around memory, but I try to be a little more creative. I react to some things having to do with memory. Um, I did a, a video of me hiking through uh, part of Everest and it was more about like a relaxation mental cool. uh, thing to relax to. Oh yeah, forget so you're I, like some extreme uh, fitness guy, uh, outdoors athlete. Guy. I try, I try. Amateur level. Anyone who's watching this that is also a fan of the podcast, we're going to try and drag Nelson out of the podcast one of these days. Uh, he keeps saying no, but eventually we're going to convince him enough to come out there. Go sub to Nelson, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.